Okay, so factoring day one, 5.5a. We're gonna talk about GCF and simple trinomials. Does anyone remember what GCF stands for? Greatest common factor. Greatest common factor, okay? That is what it stands for. Factors are what, anyone? Yes. Factors are thing, numbers you multiply together, right? Those are factors, things that you multiply by, okay? So we're going to start off with what I call method number one, GCF factoring, okay? okay? And it's just simple. You're finding a monomial, which means that nothing is being added or subtracted to equally divide all terms, to evenly divide, not equally. Like eight divided by two? That's a, two is a factor of eight because it will equal, evenly divide into eight, right? So therefore, two is a factor of eight. All right. So we're starting here. To find the GCF, you're gonna look at the number. And it's the word, the key thing is greatest. What is the largest number I can divide 15 and nine into equally? Yeah. Three. But I think I said that backwards. I understand where you came from, Gerardo. I blame myself for that, why you said 45. 45 is their least common multiple, but the greatest common factor would be three. 45 is their LCM. That's the largest number that 15 and nine, the smallest number 15 and nine can both divide into equally, right? Yes, Gerardo, you were on a track, bro. You got it. All right, but what is the largest number I can divide into 15 and nine, which would be three. So the GCF here is three, okay? Now to factor this, you're going to divide by the GCF and you're gonna get a quotient. The quotient is the result of division. Do we remember that? Whereas product is the result of multiplication. Yes? Okay, so I'm gonna divide each number by, each term by three. 15 divided by three is, and I still have that M squared there, right? Nine divided by three is, three. Then you, you to factor, you put them together. It's going to be your GCF, parentheses, your quotient. My GCF is three. My quotient is 5M squared minus three. And that is your answer. You just factored using a monomial, AKA GCF. Was that terrible? Okay, are we good? Keep, can we keep going? Yeah. All right. Now we're going to talk about, well, what if they both have a variable? Okay. When there is a variable in play, the key thing with the variable is you want, they have to have the same variable and you're going to take the smallest amount of, smallest number of that variable. So you're looking for the smallest number. I didn't mean to write on that. You can't see that. Smallest variable. So your GCF number wise is easy. What is the GCF between five and 10? Five. Now you're gonna look at your X squared. What is the smallest number of X's represented? You have X squared and you have X1. What is my smallest one? X1, just X. So my GCF is five X. Do we see that? So now I'm gonna divide to find my quotient. So we divide by 5x. We divide by 5x. 5 divided by 5 is 1. When you're dividing exponents, what are you actually doing? You're subtracting. Do you all remember that? When you're dividing variables with exponents, you're subtracting the powers. So you're subtracting 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is? So you're left with 1x. plus 10 divided by five is two. Here you have one minus one, which is gonna do what? Zero, cancels out because anything to the zero power is one. Um, you can, when I rewrite it, it's gonna be gone. I'm just writing it all out. Okay, so your rewrite is always gonna be your GCF parenthesis, your quotient. 
My GCF is 5x. My quotient is x plus 2. This is the factored form of 5x squared plus 10x. Questions? Okay. All right. Doesn't matter how many terms there are. You still have to look at all terms and they have to all have something in common. Okay. So when I look at all the terms, so I have four, six, 14. What is the greatest common factor between four, six, and 14? Two. Now I'm going to look at the variable. I have x to the fifth, x to the third, and x. What is the least amount of that variable do I have? x. So my GCF is 2x. Now I'm going to find my quotient. So I divide by my GCF, divide by the GCF, divide by the GCF. 4 divided by 2 is? 2. x to the fifth divided by x to the one is x to the four. Six divided by two is three. x to the third divided by x to the one is x squared. 14 divided by two is seven. And x to the one divided by x to the one is going to eliminate, cancel each other out. Yes, so then your factored form is 2x times 2x to the 4 minus 3x squared plus 7. Yes? Questions, hesitations? Cool. So now we're gonna do an example with a negative, okay? With the negative, note to self, if leading term is negative, your GCF is negative. Okay? If the leading term is negative, your GCF is negative. So in this situation, my leading term is negative. So what does that mean about my GCF? It's going to have to be negative, okay? So now we're going to go through and find the GCF. So numbers, eight and 12, four. Variables, A squared and A. What's the least? B and B squared, what's the least? C squared and C squared, what's the least? C squared. So my GCF is negative four ABC squared. What's, they're both C squared, so the least is what they are. So we're gonna find our quotient. Negative eight divided by negative four is positive two. A squared divided by A. B divided by B. C squared divided by C squared. Negative 12 divided by negative four. Positive three. A divided by A. B squared divided by B. And C squared divided by C squared. So that's your quotient. And then you're going to write your factored form. Again, it's your GCF, parenthesis, your quotient. That is very satisfying. So we have negative four a b c squared parenthesis two a plus three b. 
All right, so we're gonna pause right here as a whole class, and I would like for you to do five and six on your own. Okay, we're gonna pause, and then you're gonna do five and six on your own. The table or by yourself? By yourself. Here we go. So on number five, you had three, nine, and six. So the GCF should have been three. We had x to the fourth, x to the third, and x squared. So it should have been x squared. We had no y, one y, and y squared. So our GCF is no y. It has no y in it. So we're going to divide everything by 3x squared. To get our quotient, and our quotient is 1x squared minus... 3xy plus 2y squared. So therefore, your factored form is 3x squared, x squared minus 3xy plus 2y squared is your final answer. Yes, how we do? If you made a mistake, do you see where your mistake is? Yes. Or do you need explanation? I know my mistake. Okay. All right, let's check six. So on six, starting off with our numbers, 15 and 20, their GCF should have been? Five. Five. Moving on to our variables, our lowest between X cubed and X squared is? X squared. Y squared and Y? Y. Z and Z squared. Z. Z. So your GCF is 5x squared yz. Yes? Yes. So I divide. And as you get better with this, a lot of this will become mental. Does that make sense? Okay. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. Mm -hmm. X cubed divided by x squared is x. x. Y squared divided by y is y. y. And z divided by z is going to cancel out. 20 divided by 5 is 4. four. x squared divided by x squared is going to? Cancel. Y divided by y is going to? Cancel. And z squared divided by z is? Z. z. So your factored form is 5x squared yz times 3xy plus 4z. Okay. Okay. I know what I'm doing. How do we feel about GCF? Good. We're good now. Good. All right. Now we're going to flip over. Oh, before you flip over, I'm sorry, go back to the front. Thank you. I like that book. At the bottom, I need you to write. If there is no GCF, the answer is prime. If it can't be factored, you just write prime. So no GCF means that it is a prime. Why are we learning different methods if we just there's multiple methods of factoring? Yeah, this is why it's day one. Okay. All right. On the back. Next method. When you have trinomials, okay. A trinomial means that we're in our quadratic form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay. The difference here is that for the basic trinomials, your a equals one. So you're only focused on. I'm just going to cross it out. Uh -oh. No, we can factor out it, make it positive. Mm -hmm. We change signs. Yeah, we're going to do an example of it. So that means our A is invisible, right? He's Casper the Friendly one. Okay. All right. So we're going to start here. This is method number two. It's called branches. And the reason why it calls branches is because when you think about it, it kind of makes little branches. All right. So notice we have this trinomial. It's called a simple trinomial. And that's because our A is one. All right. We have B squared plus 7B plus 12. Okay. To factor this, it's going to factor out into what we call binomials. So it's going to end up making two binomials. Binomials means that you're adding or subtracting two things together by hence the word okay so in order to fill this in i have to figure out what am i adding and or subtracting to find its factored form okay. to start off with you're going to identify your c term and what is c 12. 12. 12. 
C is 12. And you're going to ask yourself, what are the factors of 12? What are the factors of 12? One, one times 12, two times six, three times four. Am I missing any other factors of 12? That's it, right? Those are factors of 12. Factors mean numbers that multiply, okay? Now, to factor this, you're going to ask yourself, out of the factors of 12, which ones will add to give you your B term, which is seven? Uh, three and four. So verifying, three times four is 12. Three plus four is seven. So my factored form is B plus three and B plus four. And that is your, those are your factors. The order you write them in does not matter. No, she was just asking me why you have to add B, you have B. Oh, I don't know. Oh, because I put B and then students complained. And then I thought I'd put it back, but I did it. So it doesn't matter. It, I just put the B just to show you, you can use it. It doesn't matter the variable. It matters the setup. How do we feel? Oh, that was it? Mm -hmm. Wait, we could use either method? No, the problem depends on, the method you use depends on the problem. Oh. Yes, so the method you use depends on the problem. However, you may use GCF before you use branches. Okay. Yeah. Wait, are you done with the lesson? No. Okay, I'll ask you All right, so let's try this one. Notice this one, our A doesn't equal a positive one, it equals A negative, negative one. So before we do anything, we have to factor out that negative, okay? So we factor out the negative, which just basically means you move it to the outside and it's gonna change the sign of everything else. So instead of a positive two becomes A, negative. instead of a positive 35 becomes A, negative, negative 35. And now everything else is the same. So you still are starting off with your C. And what is our C value? It's now negative 35. So in your brain or out loud or on paper, you're asking, what are the factors of negative 35? But they need to stay paired together. So we have one and negative 35. We have five and negative seven. Or we have negative one and positive 35, negative five and positive seven. Those are the factors of negative 35. Does that make sense? So out of those factors, what multiplies, clearly we have, but adds to give me negative two. It would be negative seven and five. Because five times negative seven is negative 35. And five plus negative seven is negative two. So the factored form of this would be, you're gonna keep your negative, negative T plus five and T minus seven. Okay, I would like for you to try number three okay. on your own. Okay. So first you're gonna focus on your C and my C is? Negative 24. Negative 24. The factors of negative 24 would be negative one and positive 24, negative two and positive 12, negative three and positive eight, negative four and positive six. Okay, can anyone guess why I start off with my smaller numbers being negative? Because what is my sum gonna be? So I can have a positive sum, right? So when I looked at here, I saw that this had to be positive. So is there any real reason for my larger numbers to be negative? No, so out of my options that I have here, what multiplies to give me negative 24, but adds to give me five? Negative three and eight. So my magic numbers, just to make sure, negative three plus eight is five. Yeah, negative three times eight is 24. Yay, I did it. So therefore my factor is Z minus three times Z plus eight. And that is my factor. Now the hope is as you get better at this, that you're not having to do the branches. 
the hope is that you eventually start doing this a little bit mentally, right? So um, that is what examples four and five is our mental math check. Oh. So our goal is to be able to do this mentally um, just because it's the smaller part of the lesson. But if you're looking at factors of C, so factors of C that sum to be 14. So that's what I'm asking myself. What multiplies to give me 40, but adds to give me 14? Four and 10. So what is my answer? There we go. If you still need to list out the factors, so if I still needed to go through 140, two and 20, four and 10, five and eight, you all of that is perfectly fine. If you need to see it, see it. But eventually, when you have a simple trinomial, it becomes more of a mental math factoring. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, let's do it again. So you're asking yourself what multiplies to give you negative 18, but adds to give you positive three. It would be. Six and three, what kind of three? Negative. negative three. So checking it, six times negative three is negative 18. Six minus three is positive three. So my factors are positive six and negative three. It does not matter the order you write the factors in. All right, how do we feel? Good. Doable, 92.